Good day, Strategy Gamers, and welcome back to episode two of our Let's Play series, Downfall Conquest of the Third Reich. Last episode was a lot of fun as we got the action started with the Soviet forces on the East Front, doing a total of four different attacks. Took a while, but made a lot of progress over on the East. We now find ourselves where, on the initiative track, the Western Allies, at the top of your screen there, are the lowest initiative markers. That means it's their turn to go. We kind of survey the Western Allies situation right now. Uh, kind of feels like a slow start, I think, in most games, a downfall to the Western Allied player. Uh, so trying to cram as much as you can into each turn feels so necessary, but you, you do have a little bit of time, right? There's a long time between now and the game ending. So with your decision-making, don't feel like you have to do everything all at once. It's uh, mentally frustrating sometimes to see that you're just in North Africa and you're not even on mainland continental Europe yet. Um, but when we look at the Western Allied player, they have the most choices available to them right now when we look at the action track, where we have a attack and move order, an attack order, partisan, and recruit order available to choose from, as well as in their planning box, they have an attack order also available to them. So a lot of options there for the Western Allied player. Unfortunately, some of them aren't that great for us. If we look at the map, there's only two spots in Africa where you could even conduct an attack, and one of them would be a bit of a suicide mission against the 5th Panzer, and the other is an infantry unit, which you're then limited because the attack and move order does not allow for attack and movement of infantry units. So this just makes it really uh, kind of difficult here for the Western Allied player in getting a lot done during this turn. I think what we will then do is take the... So we, we, we could take the attack three order from our planning box or from the action track. I'm feeling like we should take it from the action track so that way if we want to do something like the recruit order or partisan warfare next time, our negative penalty for having orders above those options is less. And again, we get to then draw one more onto the action track in a future turn. So we're going to play this one, which comes at initiative cost of six. Now I skipped over it, but the weather marker is ahead of the Western Allied initiative. So we don't need to do anything with weather, but we do need to take our initiative marker from the 19 that it's at, excuse me, the 20 that it's at, up to the 26. And when we do so, we're going to flip it to its event planning, or excuse me, pending event side, because we have passed our event space on the initiative track. So we'll go through the event procedure here after we get done with the order itself. Now, as mentioned, there's not too much decision making with only two possible attack locations. We will attack with the 8th British against the Italians here. The uh, OKW player, they don't have anything in their hand. The Western Allied player does have a card at their disposal, uh, Armored Brigade for Canadian Commonwealth or British units. There's a DRM that can be applied in fair or snow weather. I don't think we're going to play that because, frankly, we've got quite the advantage here in this particular combat. So let's reset our combat track to zero. And let's start going through all the different modifiers to see where we're at. Uh, begin with a plus three column shift for the strength of our unit. There's no flanking attackers and there's no armor involved. There's no elite badges or conscription badges. We do have a Western unit involved, so that's a plus one for us. Looking at the defender's modifiers, they have one for strength, bringing us back down to a three. And we see there is terrain because they're in a city, so that takes us down to a two. That is the extent of their strength modifiers, though. They're not an armored unit, yeah. So that, that's the end of the strength modifiers. In terms of DRM, uh, it's important to note that in Libya and Egypt, snow weather uh, is actually fair weather. So if we look at the weather card here, you can read towards the bottom that it's always fair weather in Egypt and Libya. So 
when it's fair weather and we have air superiority, which we do, that is a plus two DRM to our benefit for air superiority. I don't see any other modifiers for the dice in this particular combat. So we're at a column shift two and a DRM of two. Let's roll to see where we're at. Got a native seven with our DRM, that's a nine. And we are on the plus two column for a nine is zero two. Uh, no Soviet Union, so we ignore that S there. So that is a loss of two to the defender. They can only retreat one hex, which is half of their losses. Uh, so, I mean, they, they have to go to the dead pile, considering they were just a strength of one. And our attacking unit will go ahead and advance into the vacated hex. We are no way in heck going to attack with the first British against the fifth panzer. So that concludes uh, us going through and using up all of our attacks. We now actually move on to the event uh, phase. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. The, the first thing we do is this current event, we actually move over to the discard pile. And then we move the draw pile card to the current event. We then have to remove air units to match what is currently um, here on these cards. So the Western Allies air unit actually has to come off because there's no longer a Western air unit symbol on any of these event cards. And for the OKH player, they have one, and the Soviets have two. Now we actually read through this Ural's industry event which means that the Soviets get reinforcements of a one armor. So where do we want to put an armor unit in the Soviet side here? You know, I should have thought about this a little, but let's see, do we, do any of these flip over to an armor side? I think we're gonna flip this guy to its armored side, which counts as, you know, one armored reinforcement. Actually, give me just one second there. So now that we've done the current event card resolution, we reveal what's in the draw pile, and that is Red Tide over Europe. So pretty much this is looking at partisans. If there's six or more Soviet partisans, then there's a Soviet victory. Now we are not anywhere close to that. There's only one Soviet partisan. And whichever faction has the fewest partisan in play loses initiative equal to the difference in partisan. So the Western allies have no, no partisans at all. So we're, we're flipping this card over, but we're not actually going to resolve its event until you know, it moves into the current event phase. So that'll be interesting, and that might influence our decision now to do a Western partisan if the Western allies get another turn before the Soviets. We do draw cards for that new um, card that was flipped over. So the Soviets are going to draw a card, and they got Tank Corps, uh, which is a DRM modifier in fair and snow weather. So we will add that to their hand. And we also add air units. Uh, now for, well, we, we add air units for the um, phasing player. Now we as the Western allies were the ones that actually flipped this over. So we need to then get a marker to represent that this will be an OKH air unit and we can now add an OKH air unit to the east front somewhere. Where to put that? I think we will put it here in Rostov. So that covers really my entire front line around the Stalingrad pocket. 
So that, that should help a little bit with the air superiority, I hope, uh, because we have this other unit on this side that should also be contributing to some of those hexes. And we now flip that initiative marker to its regular side. Now we find ourselves ready for the OKH turn as they are the lowest marker on the initiative track. Let's see, the weather marker is ahead of us, so nothing to do there. We get to fill empty boxes on the action track, so we're going to move everything down one spot. And then we will draw from the coffee mug a new action to put on there. So this is a command failure action, which we now have two of on the track. Isn't that just wonderful? So, you know, my first temptation is to go with the OKH um, headquarter order because it gives us some versatility then in what we choose from the operations order track. Now I, I think what I'd really like to do, here, here's a high level philosophy that I've got is the, the Axis forces should try to pull back a little bit on the East Front. My reasoning there, this might not actually be a great strategy, but my reasoning for it is in this game, that then forces the Soviet player to use a move action as well as an attack action or maybe a you know move and attack com combination action to, to actually engage us in combat. Whereas the longer that we just have this maintained front line, the more advantage the Soviets have to attack and then they get to advance after the combat once they've pushed us back. And that cycle just kind of self-fulfilling that keeps repeating itself as we get pushed back one hex, they advance one hex, and they don't have to expend any initiative then on movement. That's my own thought. Additionally, I think there's the benefit of the the OKH faction, of course, is going to be so outnumbered for the entire game. The sooner you can collapse to a shorter uh, front line, I feel it's a benefit. So let let with all that being said, Let's go ahead and use the OKH order. And then we get to choose which operations order to use that on. I don't know that we need to do anything as drastic as the move five order. I think we may want to do the move three order. And that comes at initiative cost of three, which is not that high and does allow us to move everything there on that front. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to move three hexes, or excuse me, three spots on the initiative track, which puts us on top of the Soviet initiative marker. Now, the, when, when you're in that situation, the marker on the bottom actually has priority to go next, so we don't get a double turn, unfortunately, because of that. And we can now move all of our units up to three movement points. So let's just kind of start from the north and go south on where we want to move everybody. This unit here, because of that swamp hex, it's actually a very advantageous hex to kind of control. I think we'll stay there. This unit being in a city and a forest has benefit. I think we'll keep that. This elite unit is in a city, Vakali Lukai. I did not pronounce that correctly. Um, but it's elite and in a city, so it's a pretty strong defensive position. Over here, though, this starts to get concerning. So let's move this guy out of Smolensk. And I'm going to move him back to the other side of the river here. Now, over here, I think we will retreat one. I don't know, let's see, going into the swamp costs two, so it is possible that we could go in there. 
So let's actually think about that. If we went into the swamp here, that's a very defensive position. So we're going to take the second panzer and actually bring it over here into the hills. And then just to the east of Kursk, we're going to take the second infantry and put it there. Now that leaves this air unit alone here in this hex. And this hex is in an enemy zone of control. So rebasing mechanics actually mean that I have to immediately rebase this to an eligible hex, which I think we will put into Kursk. That might mess with just a little bit of like my air coverage over here, but with us drawing back, hopefully everything's just fine. Gets a little more complicated when we look back here. Let's get these units in the front out first. So this unit can move back. I think to here makes sense. You can withdraw this way. We'll have you come here. This unit crossing the river. Let's just reference real quick the movement point cost for that. So it's an additional movement point to cross the river. So we will cross the river for two and end up back here on this hex. Or did not mean to flip that, apologies. Maybe we leave you here, actually. I kind of like that. Let's leave them there. Now this Italian unit, we're going to have come back here for one, two, and... I think we're going to move you into Rostov. And then this Bulgarian unit, we will move back one to here. And then I think we'll leave this guy, well, yeah, we'll We'll leave him there. That's a pretty strong unit, so it's going to take a lot for the Soviets, I think, to push him back. I worry a little bit if they can come and cut off my s supply, but, I mean, that, that's quite a ways for them to stretch themselves from where they're at right now. So I think we'll leave that unit there and see if it ends up being a strategic blunder or not. I don't know if there's anywhere else we want to move. We do have some units over here in the Balkans. But I think we will just leave those positioned where they're at for now. So that tackles all of the movement that we had for our order. And now we're going to go on to the OKW player's turn. So, also behind the weather marker, nothing to do there. We will move all the actions down one to fill up the track. Draw a new counter here. Ah, we got a Stavka for the Soviets. Okay. For the OKW turn here, they have the mechanized um, order in their planning box. They have a move order in the track and a command failure in the track. Now, I, I have to say, I'm inclined to do the move order. Uh, because I, I think one viable strategy is to actually evacuate North Africa to save the Africa Corps and the 5th Panzer. So I think that's one option available to us. 
Alternatively, we could try to reinforce these units with our mechanized order to bring this over to its armored side, making it much more powerful. Now, both evacuation and using the mechanized reinforcement order does involve having to trace through the Mediterranean, which risks an interception check and then a, um, a possible sea attack. So that, that would have some consequences to the decision. I think let's do this. Let's do the move order. We won't actually be able to evacuate North Africa this turn. Let's do the move order, and we will get things staged and in position for an evacuation. So we move this over here. We will pay the four initiative that comes with that, bringing us to the 26 spot. And then we will take you back to Tripoli. And the 5th Panzer back to Tunis. So now they're starting in a port for the next possible phase return, which then gives us the option, if we want to, to actually evacuate to Sicily or Italy. I, I like that as a good kind of in-between here for a decision on this turn. Let, let's go with that. Now, just real quick looking, I don't see anywhere else we'd want to move. So let's, let's maybe call it here for the episode, and we'll be back shortly with episode three as we continue on. We'll be beginning with the Soviet player, uh, right where we began with episode one. I, I think it'll be pretty exciting to see if the Soviet player is able to move and reestablish the front line there on the east front and just to kind of see what that looks like so looking forward to that as always if you have any questions about the game please leave them in the comments section below if you spot any rules mistakes or or mechanics please let me know um, always helps me as i'm considering my my actions going through and recording these videos with that strategy gamers hoping you have yourselves an excellent day bye now